Um, well, to start with, everything that Ali said about pragmatic science and accords is doubly true of uh, what I call uh, d and I'll use the for dissemination implementation um, uh, situation or science really. And we are, if you will, the most T4 in terms of the T1 to T4 uh, of the things that go on where we take effective um, interventions or programs and really try to take them uh, to scale. Um, I uh, co-direct this program along with uh, Jody Holtrup. Next slide, please, Jordan. Um, you can see here our mission um, is to both build capacity, including a lot of resources, uh, training there, and then also uh, to in partnership with people across the campus and especially with these other cores that you've heard about there to develop, test, disseminate, sustainable. I, I would also say, say feasible is a real important focus what we do, uh, cost-effective and equitable uh, solutions. We do this by at the top there using a combination of uh, frameworks, uh, theories, methods, design issues, and assessment uh, measures and methods, which are related to, but, but somewhat uh, different than used in most other types of health services research. So next slide, uh, please, Jordan. So I wanna take just one or two minutes to give you a little better uh, understanding of what our science is. I think it may be the most frequently misunderstood and some of the reasons for this even our colleagues in Canada and uh, Europe actually call this translation uh, science uh, rather than uh, DNI. But in brief, uh, this is one of the most widely used definitions that I like is DNI science is the study of methods to promote adoption, integration, and really should add sustainment there of evidence-based uh, procedures or programs. Uh, we like to use in the center there the, the seven Ps, if you will, because it's not just interventions, which people think about, but it certainly uh, can be all of these things, products, policies, principles. And the notion here as I ended in the bottom, is all the way to uh, population health or T4 impact or outcomes. Next slide. So why might people want to come to us to uh, interact or get some consultation? Um, a few bullet points here. I won't belabor them, but we focus a huge amount on, sometimes we say context is everything, but multi-level dynamic context. As I mentioned before, we make a big use of specific conceptual models and frameworks. Our focus is especially on strategies to get evidence-based uh, programs or interventions into practice, and also a big focus on adaptations to be able to do that in different types, particularly low resource settings and to reach populations that often aren't. Um, we have a specific focus across all of those, the things in italics, all those different, if you will, stages that are necessary uh, to produce uh, public health or population impact. And I'm going to just give you one more slide on the last two uh, bullet points uh, there. So if we could go ahead to the next slide, please, Jordan. One of our key mantras in DNI science is designing for dissemination, sustainability, and as you'll see on the next slide, I would also say equity. And the idea here is often we get approached by people when they're like in the fifth year uh, of a program and they have effective intervention, and then they want us to work with them on dissemination. We're glad to do that, but honestly, it's you're only gonna get you know half or less of the uh, impact if you don't think about these issues from the beginning. So we say it's never too early to think about things about what's gonna be generalizable, what's gonna be feasible uh, for settings. And so we like to kind of use this model to talk with people in our training. Next slide, please. So I want to talk specifically about equity. There's been a large amount uh, of attention, maybe belated attention in implementation science to health equity, but these are a few of the ways that DNI science and that we particularly uh, in accords want to focus on uh, trying to address uh, health equity issues. Again, the first of all, the key mantra of understanding context, and in this case, particularly issues uh, like structural racism, like historical uh, context, uh, uh, resource settings, what settings are we going to be able to reach people in? 
this notion of tailoring or adapting strategies to diverse uh, settings, not only populations, but settings is important. The third bullet there, we make a distinction and we think it's important between representation and representativeness. What we mean by that is representation is who's at the table, uh, all the way from the initial conceptualization to the planning, to the proposal uh, stage, to ongoing uh, engagement. Whereas representativeness focuses on the equity or the characteristics of who you're reaching in terms of settings, in terms of delivery staff, in terms of uh, patients or end users, again, across all of these stages or steps, if you will, there uh, below. And we place a really strong emphasis on system science and especially attending to unintended consequences, which I think is some of the ways in which, uh, unfortunately, we end up exacerbating uh, unintentionally uh, equities. So next slide. Okay, so specifically what we do, why might you wanna come to us and what do we do for capacity building? Well, number one is research consultations, as Ali said, uh, both individual ones uh, and uh, for teams, healthcare teams we consult with. We're asked to do a huge amount of individual mentoring, particularly on uh, things like K's. Uh, at times that exceeds our capacity and we also have another option that's not mutually exclusive, but a group mentoring program that we've started where there's a lot of peer learning too, to uh, help address some of those issues that's newer, but has been going quite well. The third point is somewhat unique, including nationally, but we're really proud of, is we have a number of what we feel are pretty high quality, interactive, largely web-based tools, resources, guides, things to help uh, scientists, particularly those that are learning, do things like select from the huge number of different frameworks that are out there, how to do that, how to apply particular uh, models and, and guides that we have. I'll say just another word about uh, the graduate certificate program, uh, which uh, Ali has talked about, and we've just completed a uh, NHLBI funded K-12 uh, training program specifically uh, also. I'll say just a word about collaborations, but uh, in some ways, as Dr. Buttrick started out with, we say collaborations are us here. But I do want to uh, come back, you may well have questions to talk about the first one, because uh, again, many people on campus don't understand since C uh, CCTSI does have a dissemination group too, with whom we work in close partnership. In fact, some of our people are the same folks there. But the key difference there is we focus our group on the research of dissemination or the science of it in particular. It's a bit of a gray area, whereas the CCTSI is the place to go to for the practice. So if you have something and you actually want to design communication around that, getting out the word, you, you'd go to them. If you want to talk about how to study uh, this or maybe test some different approaches, you would generally come to us. Next slide. And I think, nope, I got a couple more. This is our website, which is also a work in progress. But again, I uh, just wanna point out a few things here. Again, in these boxes, we tried to make it easy to navigate, but consultations, we have a standard brief intake form to help us triage your consult to the best person there. Uh, center uh, top box, again, these interactive tools that we think can be things that people can take away. For example, a DNI grant proposal, we have an interactive tool that you and your mentor can kind of fill out to check different things. And then the certificate program, given the time, uh, I'll focus and I have another slide on it, which I think may be my, uh, my last slide. Thank you, Jordan. So just a word about uh, this. Um, there's been both nationally and locally a, a just a huge demand for this type of uh, training. I think both to put things into practice and because uh, NIH and PCORI in particular have invested a lot recently in this type of uh, science. The uh, graduate program is 12 credit hour graduate program done in collaboration with the graduate school. There are three required uh, courses there and several uh, electives. They address many of the issues that uh, I mentioned before in terms of context and adaptation, designing for dissemination and sustainment. And in this, this is not just didactic, 
paperwork, but essentially every one of them has an individual project and many people work on a grant proposal, use this to different courses work to develop and uh, refine a grant proposal. It is the third bullet. This is uh, very much transdisciplinary. Uh, DNI can't succeed if it doesn't have the transdisciplinary uh, integration. And I might mention one thing in particular is we uh, strongly partner in addition to like uh, doing mixed methods and working with Dan's group that he's going to talk about an example in shared decision making. Uh, we really focus a lot on health economics and understanding the cost, uh, cost effectiveness and cost to who there. But we're fortunate to be able to attract not only our own faculty, but uh, real national, and even international leaders as co-instructors. Last point, the program is virtual. So it's widely, it's both internal and external. It is generally synchronous though. So like there's a, a, a meeting like once a week, usually in most of these uh, online, but, but it is virtual uh, training there uh, to allow us to do distance learning. And I believe with that next slide, Jordan, is I'll leave you with this uh, philosophical question to think about uh, as I turn it over to Brooke. <laughs> 